This is the HTC U12 Plus. So for those of you that were worried about the future of the company after the whole Google transaction, this is proof that they're here to stay. But there are some interesting changes to the way smartphones are approached here. Some good, some bad. The question is, is it really worth 800 plus dollars? Uh, let's find out. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now. This is our review of the HTC U12 Plus. Launching a phone in late May, early June is tough, and especially if you price it high at a time when the OnePlus 6 was just launched. That being said, the HTC U12 Plus is a very nice looking phone. I've heard a lot of people praise it for its design. I have to admit that I'm kind of mixed. There are things I like, things I don't. I definitely do praise this translucent back. It is unique. It is something that we need in the market. OEMs trying to figure out new approaches. I also like how it feels in the hand as well. And I like that there's a case bundle in the box because I'm sure these won't be easy to find. I also like the internals. We have a brand new Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 in addition to six gigabytes of RAM, options for 64 or 128 gigs of expandable storage, in addition to a 3500 milliamp hour battery, no wireless charging in tow, IP68 water and dust resistance. Where I'm mixed about this design is everything to do with this display and not because of its quality. This six inch Super LCD 6 is gorgeous. I find it to be one of the best implementations of an LCD. Great blacks, great color saturation. My biggest problem really is the fact that these bezels make this phone look very dated for this day and age. But hey, for those of you that complain about the case of notches in 2018, this is probably one of your best options right now. Other things that I don't like are honestly small little details in the fit and finish. Minor things like how the display protrudes the chassis, which reminds me of the 1M9 we all hated. And then the other case is these buttons or the lack thereof. Like I have no problem in making the move to capacitive buttons if that's the future. The biggest problem is the implementation where I press the button up here and I feel the vibration down here. And then you have the issue that sensitivity options are rather limited to mostly what you could do with edge sense and that's about it. And speaking of edge sense, there are some really cool things that come with the blend of software. Squeeze once to launch the camera, at least in my case, that's my favorite gesture right now. Squeeze and hold, you've got another one. And I really like this new feature where you double tap on one side of the display to get it to become one-handed mode to that side. Double tap the other and it slides to the other. These are definitely features that make a lot of common sense. Now the fact that HTC Sense is now launching without a number version means a lot. The company continues to downplay its relevance as stock becomes more important. I love that duplicate apps continue to be a non-issue. I love the widgets, I consider them to be my favorite. My biggest complaint with the service is really the fact that the company addresses bloat from third parties but provides bloat of its own. Sure, you can turn off blink feed and turn off the notifications from news, but I hate the fact that they're activated at the beginning. And then you've got the HTC Sense Companion, which uses AI in theory to try to suggest things you might care about, when honestly, I just really would not like to be bothered. Again, these things are optional. I just find it ironic that the company says that it's addressing bloat, and yet what we get most is that, particularly from its own services. Now, I've been using the HTC U12 Plus for about two weeks on and off between New York City and Guatemala City now. I like things like, for example, phone calls. I love the sound quality of this phone. I love the speakers. Pro, abbreviation for professional, which in turn stands for something or someone. Uh, that's I can't really say that I like the approach to audio with the headphone jack because there isn't any. I don't remember getting a dongle in the box and I'm not sure if all of you are going to get the U-Sonic headphones in order to be able to take advantage of the whole approach to active noise cancelling. A thing that's decent, I would say, is the battery. It's not the best out there considering the size of the battery pack. It'll get you through the day. You'll just have to get used to the fact that at some point it'll probably struggle a little depending on your usage. And then when it comes to the elements of the user interface, I will tell you this much. 
The phone performs great with things like graphics intensive games, it just delivers and it has a lot to do with the specifications. The funny part is that even though this user interface lacks bloatware, you will notice some stutter. And this is odd, this is actually the first HTC phone that I would say that I've noticed any sort of stutter in sense. When you launch the app tray for example, but it only happens once and then once you start using it, probably once it loads in RAM, then it'll just not give you any issues afterwards. So just keep that in mind. Probably a software update will fix that. Now the cameras, because we've got four cameras here, are actually really good for the most part. I mean, they got a great DxO Mark rating. The experience is interesting though. For example, these 12 ultra pixels on the primary shooter are great. They have me really impressed. Great color saturation and detail. No less than what you'd expect from a flagship in this price range. And performance in low light is also killer with some amazing performance in really dark scenarios. Portrait photos are good, we know that most phones struggle with this, and even portrait photos with the two selfie cameras are really good. Again, not perfect mainly because we've experienced that a lot of companies don't get this right all the time. I guess my main disappointment is video and things I wasn't expecting, where, for example, I only noticed stabilization at 1080p video in the primary shooter, but 4K video doesn't seem to bring any to the experience. And as much as I'd like to praise the wide-angle experience with selfie video, again, I don't notice any stabilization included here. To conclude, I have to say the HTC U12 Plus is a really good phone, one I would recommend. It checks a ton of the buttons of what I would expect from a flagship in 2018. The biggest problem is the fact that this phone was launched too late and priced too high. I've always said this, HTC phones are not launched in a bubble, there's competition out there. And when you have devices like the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus now being offered at buy one get one free, or you have the OnePlus 6 priced really aggressively and providing comparable features and experiences to the U12 Plus, it's really hard for me to sit here and say, yes, buy this over that. I can't. If you're an HTC fan, then definitely go for it. Significant improvements when compared to the U11, but this is not the best phone for $800. Not at that price range. But then again, this is just my opinion. Let us know in the comments what you think of the HTC U12 Plus. While you're at it, make sure you follow us on social media. Subscribe to our channel as well for more videos like this one. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.